Men and women can never be friends. And that's the point of this video. You don't have to watch the rest of it, okay? Men and women cannot be friends. And the rest of this video is gonna be me explaining why men cannot be friends with women and women cannot be friends with men. It never works, ever. Because the sex thing always, always, always gets in the way. Because ultimately, we're animals. Never forget that. We are animals. And our primal instinct of lust and sex always gets in the way of our relationships. And it happens both ways, okay? See, there are a lot of guys who mock the beta orbiter. You know, the beta orbiter is that guy who's always like circling some girl and trying to be her friend, quote unquote. And you know, he's just waiting for the opportunity to fuck her, of course. And girls never believe this, by the way. Girls think that, no, 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 that's not, that's not true. He's just my friend. Bullshit, he wants to fuck you, okay? And you, woman, you're saying, no, this guy, John X, right? John X is my friend. He would never, he doesn't want to, he doesn't see me that way. It's not a sexual thing. Then ask yourself the following. How many 60-year-old women does your friend, John X, have? Huh? How many 60-year-old women is he texting and talking to about movies and about clothes and about all kinds of shit? Huh? How many? Huh? None, I bet. <laughs> It's not, you know, because no guy in his fucking right mind is gonna make friends with some 60 year old lady. I mean, we'll be friendly and polite to her, of course. Of course we would. We're, we're gentlemen, of, after all, right? So, of course, we're gonna be nice and polite to some 60 year old lady, but we're not gonna wanna be friends with her. Yeah, we don't wanna tell her about our situation at work and what we're trying to achieve and whatnot. Why? Because we don't wanna fuck a 60 year old woman. That's why. Uh, we want to fuck a 24-year-old, yeah, or 22-year-old, 21-year-old is the optimal age, but you know, not a 60-year-old. That's why we're not friends with her. Yeah, and it goes the other way too, by the way, huh? See, you know that, uh, that girl that you know who's your friend, who's always calling you up and shooting the breeze, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, she's just my friend. No, she wants to bang you. Yeah, believe me, because it happened to me twice. I had two friends at, at different times in my life. Uh, one was a woman named Susan. I met her in college. She was a great girl. I had a great time with her. She was just, we would talk about movies and books and culture. We talk about all kinds of interesting stuff, st stuff that we would talk for hours about. I mean, with this woman, we would have, this was during college, we would have these marathonic movie watching sessions. We'd rent like five, seven, once we rented a dozen movies and we watched them one after the other, the whole fucking thing, right? And we would talk about them and we had a great time. And then finally in 2008, no, sorry, 2006, okay? I uh, um, invited her to vacation uh, with me in Chile, and I paid for a ticket and the whole thing, you know, because she was she seemed to be down in the dumps, right? And I did it because she was my friend. I considered her my friend. I, the idea of having sex with her was just like not on the table at all, right? And she came down here, she thought that it was like a big romantic thing, and then she realized it wasn't. It wasn't like a big romantic thing. I was just being friendly, right? Basically, the relationship broke off after that, and unfortunately, I have never seen her since. I've never spoken to her since. She just went radio silent. I've tried to reach out to her a number of times, but she just refuses to engage because she thought that, you know, she and I somehow, someday, some when, you know, it was going to happen, and it was never going to happen, and that just broke her heart. Yeah, and then I had a friend called Paula. And it was really funny because Paula thought that I was her beta orbiter. This is in Chile, and she was in the art scene, okay? Uh, and I was in the art scene a, a bit. You know, I was like collecting at the time. I was getting into that kind of phase, right? And so I was going to galleries and shit like that. And she was an art expert, right? I mean, she'd worked at Sotheby's in New York. I mean, she was a, was a bona fide expert in the whole art scene. And me and Paula, we would hang out and uh, have a good time. By the way, these aren't their real names. And uh, we'd hang out and talk about art and collecting and go to you know auctions and shit together. And, and she thought that I was her beta orbiter. And I just really liked her. That, that's it, you know? And uh, one time, you know, uh, we were talking and, um, and she had a friend, a hot friend. And I thought, man, that's a hot friend, right? And I thought to myself, you know, I'd like to bang her. I mean, I didn't tell Paula that in those many words. I said, oh, I'd like to get to know her better. And then all of a sudden, Paula realized that she was orbiting me. <laughs> because, yeah, and then, you know, I think she, it, it, the dime dropped on her because she'd always thought that I was the orbiter. But see, she was the one who always texted me or called me. She was the one who always told me about auctions. 
And I was like, sure, let's go and this and that. You know, I was always the guy who would go there. I was like her plus one, right? But I had no interest in her. And then all of a sudden, when I expressed interest in this friend she had, all of a sudden she realized, and all of a sudden she realized that she was the beta orbiter, and you know, she threw a hissy fit. And that was that for that relationship. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh God. The sex thing always gets in the way. And these are two anecdotes I've told, right? And of course, I'm not gonna tell you the, the times that I was the beta orbiter, of course not. I'd be too embarrassed to tell about that, but I was a couple of times, sure I was. We all have been. Okay, even the, the chattest Chad or the fattest Tyrone, huh? every guy has at one point or another been a beta orbiter. It's natural. Uh, don't feel bad about it and be embarrassed about it. Realize what it was and realize that you had no chance whatsoever because if you fell into the beta orbit, you're not going to get out of it. There's no fucking way for a guy to get out of the beta orbit unless he breaks off the relationship, goes off and becomes somebody big, somebody famous and then comes back and is aloof from her, then he might stand a chance, but you know, that's circumstance. That's uh, gonna fucking happen, okay? Once you're in the, in, the, in the beta orbit of a girl, you're not gonna get out of it. And the same goes for women. You, a woman watching me, you fall into the, the beta orbit of a guy, he will never want to fuck you. Yeah, because guys, I've done, it's, it's a weird thing. A lot of guys say that, oh, we wanna fuck everybody. That's actually not true. There are a certain category of girls that we sort of like put into the sister zone. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the girl that we think she's cute, we think she's adorable, we have no sexual interest in her whatsoever. Because that's the, that's the truth. Guys want to fuck every girl. Sure, sure. But there are certain girls, for whatever reason, that they fall into this sister category. And we're extremely protective of them. And we want only what's best for them. And we're happy to be practically their gay best friend, even though if we're straight, right? But we have no interest in fucking them, on the contrary. And we, we just, we're very protective of them as if they were our little sister. And a lot of times girls won't realize this. Girls will think that a guy who treats them like that, very protective and, 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 and uh, very like, oh, you're just a little bratty little sister, that he's secretly after her. No, it's not, okay? I can tell you because I'm a guy and I know guys and I know how guys think. We, we have this, this weird thing that, you know, there are basically invisible women those are older women that we just don't want to fuck. We don't even see them. I mean, we're polite to them, of course, and uh, you know, we treat them nicely and all the rest of it. We, we don't want to be with them. Like the 60-year-old I mentioned before, you know, we're polite to her, but we're not going to do anything with her. Then there are the, the, the fertile women, the women between the ages of uh, 18 and say 40, just for the sake of argument, right? Now, those women, the vast majority, we want to fuck them all. The vast majority, 90%. But there's this 10% that we look at them and they're like, oh, they're so cute. Oh, she's so cute, she's adorable. Look at her little dress, she looks adorable. We look at her like a sister, or worse, sometimes like a daughter. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm 53 and I'm starting to see girls, you know, in their 20s and I, I think that they're adorable as if they were like my possible daughters because they're old enough to be my daughter. And I just look at them like they're adorable. And like when I go to a park or something like that, I see children running around and I, they, my heart melts, of course. You know, it's this sentimentality that we have, that guys have. The sentimentality that we have comes from the fact that we are the more romantic of the two sexes. We have greater illusions. That's part of our psychological makeup from evolution. Okay, It's too long to discuss here, but I'll do a video about how men are more romantic than women. Far more romantic. Oh yeah, because it's the nature of our illusions. We always have, are hopeful for the future because we're always chasing something. And we have to create an illusion of these objects that we chase, be it a woman, be it a woolly mammoth, be it uh, you know climbing Everest or killing that uh, other soldier of that opposing army. We, we create these illusions for ourselves that drive us forward. That's why we're more romantic. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, uh, going back to it, we have this sense that certain girls are just off the table, sexually speaking. And it, it happens for different reasons. You know, for whatever the reason, we just take these girls and they're like, we, the idea of having sex with them is disgusting. Like having sex with your sister. It's just like, ew, that's fucking repulsive, you know? And if a girl falls into that category, the heartbreak can be severe. Anyway, let me get back to guys, okay? Guys, see, a girl doesn't want to fuck their best friend. Simple as that. Girls just do not want to fuck their best friend. Hmm? 
and you become her best friend, she's not going to want to fuck you. See, because ultimately the kind of relationship that a woman wants with a man, sexually speaking, is not one of friendship. Hmm? No, she doesn't want to be friends with her lover. Hmm? She says that, but that's a lie or, or not a lie. It's, it's a misconception of her own desires, and which happens to both sexes, by the way. We more often than not fool ourselves as to what we actually want. And women, they fool themselves thinking that they want a friend. They don't want a friend. They want a challenge. They want somebody who's always just elusive, just a little bit beyond their grasp, just a little bit beyond their reach. You know, you've noticed how it drives women absolutely nuts when a guy goes off and does something on her own without her. I mean, you know, you, you have a girlfriend, right? And you decide that you're going to do whatever the fuck on your own. And, um, you know, you, you go off and do your shit and your girlfriend is like, what are you doing? Why are you not with me? What, what, what were you, go what was going on? Right? She gets all insecure and you're off like, like fixing the motorcycle, you know, or playing with your stamp collection or some, something that you find interesting, but you know that she's going to find incredibly boring, but you don't tell her what it is, or she doesn't actually know how boring it would be for her. And she gets all nervous about it because because that's the relationship, the true relationship between men and women. Men and women are never friends. Men and women are each other's object of desire. And they are always chasing after this object. Sometimes successfully, sometimes fruitlessly. Often as not, as a way to achieve this objective, both men and women will pretend to the other or to themselves that they are just friends. There's never a friendship between men and women, never. And there's never a friendship between women and women, by the way. No, they're, women and women, they're superficially friendly, but uh, when a man gets in the way, the claws come out. Mm-hmm, yeah. The only true friendship that you never have in this life is between two men who share the same points of view about reality and who can help each other achieve their mutual goals. That's the only true friendship in this world. So rather than try to be friends with a woman, uh, in order to get into her pants. Forget about that. Try to make friends with other guys. Guys whom you respect, guys whom you know will be with you when shit gets heavy. Mm -hmm. Those are the friends you want. And so far as women are concerned, don't try to make friends with them because you're not gonna fuck them if you're their friends because they, they will see you as asexual. Mm -hmm. No, don't try to do that. Don't try to be friends with her. Uh, you see a woman you want, you chase her. But don't try to slide in all sneaky uh, by being her friend. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And you'll only regret it and realize what a fool you've made of yourself. Oh, yeah. so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe to my Patreon channel. Link is in the description below. You'll find uh, an extra video. I put out an extra video every week and you'll find over 150 videos at this point on that Patreon channel, as well as a Sunday show called the Weekly Webinar. And you'll also find the recordings there as well. So please check it out. Thanks so much. And I will catch you next time.